let's talk about the elephant in the room. Yara Barbar and a few other people have asked this. What do you think can and should be done with Hezbollah? Obviously, um, a big question here in the country because of our geography, because of our loyalties that are that are not all the same we are obviously not living in a united country we do not have a united front this is also part of the problem um, also part of the problem with the uprising and the different opposition groups uh, so those two questions together yeah. i would add so go ahead hopefully my english is, is working fine no, because it's in a while they're, they're asking the questions so you're doing something right, right. <laughs> Go ahead, please. So, for, for the Hezbollah question, uh, definitely yes. it's a controversial question and uh, you have a polarized uh, spectrum of opinions relating to Hezbollah. Yes. To start, for you to just have a new uh, approach on such a subject, it's not a very new approach, but a different approach that doesn't adhere to the 8th and 14th of March uh, rhetoric on the issue which serves them both i believe happy what would have to ask march, by the way yeah happy march 7th by the way. ah thank you happy march 8th, 8th. <laughs> it's tomorrow yeah. it's tomorrow yes yeah so uh i believe politics isn't a matter of just uh having uh opinions you should have opinions definitely but if you want to have solutions you have to uh, lay down on top of your opinions the balance of power and ask yourself, how can I reach this goal? So if I said that, let's say I'm in the 14th of March camp of 2005, and I say that I'm for the disarmament of Hezbollah, okay? And I know that the balance of power won't help me much in delivering because Hezbollah is stronger, and Hezbollah says no. What do you do then? Do you just reiterate the same point for 15 years? What's, what's this futile strategy of just saying things that cannot happen, at least internally, or at least peacefully, without any having any solution? What I say is that, in terms of principle, you cannot have a state uh, that doesn't have the monopoly of using uh, the legitimate force, the legitimate use of coercion. And that's one of the main definitions of a state. So, yes, having another party armed and doing some of the functions of the state is an aberration. So it's a problem we should solve. Now, how can we solve this problem when Hezbollah have its own, uh, let's say, fears? Agenda. And agenda. They all agenda. have their agendas. Each political yeah. party has the, its own agenda. But you didn't so use the word agenda. <laughs> yeah, because I, I don't use things to define Hezbollah that uh, all other parties share. Okay. <laughs> they, they, they all have agendas. The, 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 right. intrinsic, the intrinsic feature of Hezbollah is having its armaments. That's, that's specific. Okay, if, if one says that one should face this problem by trying to reinvigorate the state. Because when you say that I want Hezbollah to uh, supply its arm to the state, you should have a state. So now if I'm talking to any uh, person, uh, not a leadership of Hezbollah, any person who adheres to Hezbollah, and I tell him or her, so uh, why don't you just surrender your arms to the state? The question, the, the, the answer is easy. Yeah. Because the they, they would tell you, this armor, th these armaments have really, and not uh, fictio fictitiously, uh, protected me against Israel and has liberated some of our lands. So right. it's efficient. Right. Why should I surrender these arms to a state that cannot just uh, fix the sewers? A failed state, basically. A failed state. So, okay. What we should start with is just trying to uh, reinvigorate the state. We should have a state. We don't have a state in Lebanon. Yes, we have a, a de facto form of a state without any functions of a state. That's the problem. So you have to bring back 
people's interests into the state. So when the state is threatened, people have something to lose if they lose the state. Now the easiest thing to do is just to uh, throw some curses on the state or just saying that we are, don't have any state in Lebanon. Because this, this inefficient body doesn't have any uh, uh, loyalists. When I begin by recomposing the state and making of the Lebanese state an efficient state, at least with some of its functions, so some of the population or the constituency in Lebanon have interest in safeguarding the state, then you can talk with Hezbollah uh, really, and not just as a propaganda tool to just say that I'm against the, the armaments of Hezbollah. Yes, I can say that for 100 years. And so what? How can we make this project you know, tangible? Jad, just I want to mention this because you and I were talking a little bit before this, and we mentioned that without a credible alternative, you said, and I quote, without a credible alternative, the people have no choice but to kind of stick to the loyalties, stick to their yeah. zines, stick to their leaders. To which I ask, did I say it right until now? Yeah, that's right. Okay, <laughs> to which I ask, but how do you go about finding an alternative if you don't let go? If you don't start okay. believing, you know, for example, Shalak, I'm trying to get out of your question, guys. Shalak, how is it possible to combine small parties to form a power to face the seven big political leaders? Yes, yeah, so within that chain of thought, in terms of alternative solutions, alternative parties, alternative leaders, alternative uh, solution. Yeah. So how the do you go for that? If, yeah. yeah. So the question is, how can we make people convert to just adhere to new political parties so they can grow and uh, be forceful enough to make any impact on politics? So, yes, it's a hard question, specifically in the, in the uh, good days, because let's say before 2000 and uh, whatever, 17 from 2005 to 2017. Yes, people don't have any incentive while things are, okay, functioning as much as they are, but they are functioning to just make any drastic uh, political uh, change in their beliefs. The opportunity comes with the crisis. The crisis itself destructed much of the ideology of the political system in Lebanon. Those uh, phrases that uh, just pulled some legitimacy into the governing body, saying like, we have one of the best central uh, bankers in the world, we have one of the strongest banking sectors in the world, we have the most smart and foreseeing uh, political leadership in the region. Okay, now the crisis just uh, like... Uh, erased these fictitious uh, beliefs okay. by having this whole construct disrupted in front of our eyes. At the same time, having the failed state would have two reactions. The first is that we have to make a, a change. That's, that's a given. We cannot just continue as a business as usual because business isn't as usual. Okay, that's first. That's promising. The problem is with the second factor. And when the body of the state just collapses, the fear, the rate of fear just rises. And when you have a population that is ingrained in fear, with the history of this population having a civil war for 15 years, that would make the, transi the transition harder. Because then the existential questions would rise up. What would happen to our group? And uh, if I convert to any a new political party, if they fail, what should happen to me yeah. as the quote-unquote traitor who left its party or its leader to go to this? So people are making bets. In order to make the conversion, they should be betting on something with some hope of winning. People are not stupid uh, creatures. They have to make rational decisions. The rational decision isn't always the perfect decision, but it's the one that works in these specific conditions. So if I want to leave my political party, my traditional political party or confessional party, 
I'm making a bet. The bet is that, first of all, I should do that because uh, we should pull for change. Okay, that's one. Second, uh, does the party that I'm converting to has have any chance of succeeding? If the answer is no, no one would make that bet. So what I'm trying to say is, for all, in order to make this bet more rational, you should project a pic, uh, an image of power while uh, introducing yourself as a new party, asking the people to leave their okay. uh, old biases. Okay, okay. Hala, you're talking to me. You're talking to me in a idealistically. This is what should be done. But how do you? in tangible manner in a tangible manner how do you project power let's it's it's all about uh, fiction power isn't something uh, it's power is an image is is a thought is a reflection yes, yes and no jad right yes and no yes. i mean i agree with you but also so, we have people here who are in power and we have a society and people and citizens who are powerless. Yes, but you know. those people who are in power turned uh, in a few months between the end of 2019 mm -hmm. into people in power who are powerless because they are yeah. enabled to make any change. Okay. How can I, uh, benefit from this specific situation that was brought up by the crisis, not by the popular will. The state collapsed, and then an array of opportunities and of drama definitely occurred. Let's say uh, that's an extreme example, but just to make a point. When projecting power, uh, because power is an idea, and it's something tangible, but at the moment of crisis, it's volatile, so you can never know what happens tomorrow. Let's say uh, uh, I'm the same guy, Jad Ghusun, the journalist living in Juni or whatever. Okay, living a peaceful life. Now we all know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Somebody knocks know. on your door. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So, and uh, tomorrow morning, uh, I'm the same person, huh? but tomorrow morning, somehow, some way, I have a meeting with Joe Biden. Okay. It's a banal meeting saying nothing, just, you know, he's a journalist from Lebanon. But I take a couple of pictures, a video, and this video is broadcasted in the Lebanese media. In the afternoon, there would be something called Darat al Ghusn. So this is now the political house. I would have people coming into my house saying, why? Because people now think that, oh, he's connected. He is Joe Biden. So he must yes. be, he, he must know something or he must be in a certain plan. Yes. Maybe they want his power. Yes. So what happened is nothing. It's a reflection of power. It's not real power. Nothing happened in the meeting with Biden. But people now think that something happened. Right. So okay. if you have a group, a political group, this political group, let's say, have about 5,000 uh, loyalists. Right. But somehow, with some allies and some trickery you can project an image that would make people think that you have 50,000 right okay. and now you'd be taken seriously even though you don't have the 50,000 so but what is but what is your point you're saying that this is what parties should do they should project an, an, an image of power what I'm saying is that all parties in the world play these games right but during the elections more than others. Yeah, definitely. But now uh, the, the, the political part, the new political parties don't have the burden of the last 30 years on their backs. The, this burden is on the ruling class. How can I benefit from this within a crisis? So it's an opportunity just to get things further when I reached a dead end like we have. You should pool your resources together in order to project First of all, it's, it's really, in, in real life, you have more resources in your hand because you have more people. That's, that's reality. And you can work on projecting an image of power because the political players that we have in Lebanon, let's say Saddam Hussein, it's not in Lebanon, but in 2003. Yeah, so he's, he's the, no longer here. Yeah, so before the uh, statue of Saddam Hussein just collapsed, right. 
could have a big chunk of the Iraqis as loyalists to Saddam Hussein because he yeah. is in power, because they love him. Once the statue collapsed, you can't see uh, 10% of the Iraqis still uh, loyal to Saddam Hussein. That's the way things are in politics and in the world. So these political parties we have in Lebanon have their loyalists until they don't. It's not, uh, it's not a matter of... Uh, it's not written in stone, you're saying. It's not a forever deal. Yeah. How can you just make this change? You have to project an image of power. No one would leave their uh, loyalties into the majhul, into nothing.